welcome to Bonnie Devine and Fiona Nori. I want to start by thanking our partners at Ojibwe.net for working with, with us at the University of Michigan Museum of Art, or UMA as we affectionately call it, on um, Anishinaabe Moan translations, support for UMA exhibitions. And I want to thank our two guests today, uh, Bonnie and Fiona, for, for crafting such a lovely conversation and kind of getting um, and unpacking some of the conversations that we've had over the past few years in relation to Bonnie's mural, The Gift at UMA. UMA and the University of Michigan, uh, by way of, an, of a land acknowledgement, is, is located on the territory of the Anishinaabe people. The Ann Arbor campus re currently resides on land ceded through the Treaty of Detroit in 1807. Additionally, in 1817, the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations made the single largest land transfer to the University of Michigan, ceded through the Treaty of Fort Nix, with the hope that their children would be educated. So it's that exact history that Bonnie is taking up in her mural, The Gift, in which a map of the Great Lakes watershed is framed with hand-lettered texts that address the 1817 treaty the subsequent creation of the University of Michigan, and the largely unfulfilled promises that Indigenous students could be educated at the university. And they had named this piece The Gift, mm -hmm. um, and I was curious on that and on uh, what your thought process behind that was, because I think one of the big things that the whole um, exhibit was trying to show, and like I think that your mural gives off, is that like the land wasn't necessarily gifted. The reason I chose the name The Gift is, there's a couple of reasons, but the main one was when the Potawatomi people took um, the university to court in the 70s, asking them, you know, how come in, in, in the land transfer, when, when we bequested this land to you, um, you know, the, the condition was that our people would be allowed to go to school there. And um, no one has been allowed to go to school there in all of these years. And um, the court, the judge said, um, after reading all of the submissions, said, um, we're going to find against the Potawatomi people that they don't have a legitimate claim. They lost the suit. And the reason the judge gave was that the land had been given as a gift. And so any condition attached to it was invalid. And I thought, wow, is that ever um, ironic, illogical, ungrammatical, um, yeah. you know, like illegal, like I, all of those things. And so I was, I was interested in that, that, that this notion, this act of generosity was actually used legally in order to once again deprive these people of their land. But there was another level to it. And, and this is, I think, what Jennifer, um, the curator of the exhibition, was getting at when, when, when she talked about watershed, which is this notion of the incredible gift that the land offers us and that the waters offer us that supersedes all of these disputes and treaties and paper and legal actions and everything that human beings undertake, but that the water understands just in its very being, and, and which is this notion of um, survival. And that is the biggest gift of all. And so that's sort of why I, I was thinking of that title. you painted this directly on the wall, which never really was gonna be painted over and now has been at a white cultural in institution. Um, mm -hmm. So just kind of wondering like, what were your thoughts in creating this um, and doing that rather than like have, making it be something that would be, um, that would be lasting? I find it interesting that even though this mural has been painted over, it's still there, really, underneath the layer of paint that covers it. Absolutely. And I totally think, you know, this is a metaphor for enduring um, existence. They, um, they didn't scrape it off the wall. They didn't take down the, um, uh, the drywall that it's painted on. Uh, they just, you know, painted over it with that kind of gray museum paint. And I just think 
yeah, that's, that's actually okay, you know, um, it's still there. When I, when I started to paint it, I was using acrylic um, paint, so a, a liquid acrylic, it's quite drippy, it's very fluid. And um, I was interested in the fact that the, the substrate or the, the surface of the museum wall uh, was resisting this acrylic paint that I was using. It took us several uh, coats, several attempts to make that paint adhere to the museum wall. And I also loved that because I thought this also is a metaphor for um, the museum, which is a, a colonial institution, um, resisting um, the marks and the stories that I wanted to tell. And eventually, you know, the wall surrendered. I was able to put my my work there. I was able to really, you know, you can see how how dark those lakes are. That took a couple of coats of paint to get it to really um, be that emphatic. But um, you know, there there's a kind of a victory here that it represents for me of um, the mark making of Anishinaabe people. Um, on the land that continues to be legible. And this is, of course, what our elders have taught us, is that you persevere and you endure and you continue to, um, to assert in gentle ways. Like there was nothing violent about, about any of this. This became a negotiation um, and, and a kind of conversation with the walls, the very building of the museum in order to reach some kind of um, accord or, or compromise. You can, you can see them in this shot. Um, so there's Lake Ontario and uh, Lake Erie. Um, Lake Huron is a turtle. Uh, Lake Ontario is a bounding um, hare rabbit. Um, Lake Michigan is an otter diving down. Um, Lake Superior is a, a buffalo. Lake Erie is a uh, monster, um, an eerie monster. <laughs> and I, um, I've used this motif. This, um, this came to me, I guess, in 2008 when I was working on mapping and looking at um, specifically um, the way that Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, like that, that area, the circle around Sault Ste. Marie, um, where uh, Michigan, Huron, Manitoulin Island, Drummond Island, and Lake Superior all meet as this nexus of um, activity. And I and um, I saw them as animals. I suddenly saw the map kind of emerge um, as a figuration of animals and um, began to work with that imagery. And I have since worked with it quite a lot. And I love it because for me, when you sit by the Great Lakes, um, if you sit by Lake Huron, you can feel its awareness, you know? If you sit there long enough and, and you're quiet, uh, you can feel its beingness. And um, so for me, they are conscious, you know? And they are, they are living and they are our elder brothers and sisters and, and um, they care for us. And in the spirit of reconciliation and reciprocity, we, we must we must care for them. And this is the part of the deal that um, we kind of have forgotten. As people are thinking about that and reconcil reconciliation efforts, uh, how do you think that works like yours help people understand those ideas, um, considering like a lot of the people that attended um, the watershed and seeing this gallery probably didn't have previous knowledge on these things and topics. I don't think we can have reconciliation really until everybody is educated. And so I think I think learning about um, the history and um, you know taking a deep dive down into um, how things occurred, how things that we assume, you know, we just assume, oh, there's, you know, there's highways and uh, there's power, um, hydropower that goes across and it's carried by these poles. And 
um, you know, we have cities and we have schools and everything. And, and it's very easy to assume that all of this just um, happened without any kind of violence or dispossession or injustice. Because what has resulted is so clearly, you know, useful and, and probably good. Um, but I, I think that if we if we really are going to reach um, reconciliation, we need to understand that these things happened with a cost, and there were consequences for it. And um, in fact, with every action, with every purposeful um, creation that we may put out there, there are consequences, and we need to be mindful of those. And I think one of the one of the things that I was trying to get across was um, reconciliation carries responsibility, um, and and that responsibility is work. You know, it's laborious. Uh, to read through texts or to ask questions. Sometimes it's embarrassing uh, to ask questions because, um, you know, we live in a culture where people are, have become very, very proud of themselves and they don't want to appear not to know um, the history of their own land, for instance. Yeah, it's not necessarily about placing blame, but um, there is education that needs to be done and working from that yes i was thinking about the gift of and the meanings but bonnie would be painting intensely and then get down from the you know the scissor lift and and talk to the public and answer whatever questions they gave her um and that like there was while we may have hosted you you also hosted like the revolving public I mean, and and again, they can bring all manner of questions with them. And so to have you there and willing to share your knowledge and your, you know, your storytelling and your personal histories, um, which you did again at, at a public event to wrap up the intensive 11 day painting period. Um, that was that was such a gift. I mean, people, my colleagues are still talking about those moments with you it was great um interacting with the public we had a young kid come uh who is an aspiring painter I think she was six or seven years old I don't remember how old she was maybe 11 but anyway she had an opportunity to paint part of this and and that was just remarkable and I just think that's something I'd like to explore you know in future projects is um you know getting kids or young people, more young people to, to participate in, um, in doing this kind of work. Because I think it really is, that is when uh, people uh, learn to love art. That is beautiful, that's awesome. It seems like it was um, to a degree, somewhat of a community effort and that's um, mm -hmm. heartwarming to see since um, reconciliation tactics will be, they need to be a community effort. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And of course, we had two, like the two artists, you see us there standing, Kate and myself, we have a native person and a non native person working on this. I think this is also, you know, an essential component of the conversation that we're trying to have, which is that we have to work together. We're, we're in this together, you know, not by choice, but by um, emigration, by heritage, uh, by by our, our belonging to the land, those of us who are Indigenous. And we have to make room for each other and we have to love each other and we have to work to make this work. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, personally, I'm unenrolled and um, just through my mom and her family, we have ties to like the Grand Portage area. Um, mm -hmm. And so I've always kind of struggled with seeing where I fit in there because like not, I'm un, as I said, I'm unenrolled and I didn't necessarily grow up on reservation or like within a native community, but I did grow up around native communities and visiting them and talking with many elders and stuff. And so um, that's always been one thing that I've, especially lately have been like looking into more and like um, reconciling with my own identity 
you know, in a sense. I think it's very difficult because, of course, this notion of being enrolled or unenrolled is so such a colonial notion, right? That's this is what my mom and I have said multiple times as well. It's, it's an obstruction to, um, to personal growth and, and to owning your own self and your own past. And it was imposed there in order to do that, to make you feel uncomfortable and to make you feel as if you don't belong. And this is so wrong. We, we are having these discussions as well in, uh, in Canada because um, we don't call it enrolled, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a member of um, Serpent River First Nation and I have a number, I have a card and, you know, mm -hmm. you have to, um, and anyone who's not is suddenly suspect, whereas what the elders say is, you know, if you have Anishinaabe blood, then you're Anishinaabe and it doesn't matter how much you have or, you know, you're Anishinaabe. We, they, we, we, you know, we take you, we own you, we, you, you are us. <laughs> and there's this generosity that just is so absent um, from any of the bureaucratic labels that are attached to people. And it has caused a huge amount of harm. I'm so grateful to you, Bonnie, and to you, Fionan. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Bonnie. This is a nice uh I feel very lucky and grateful that I got to talk to you personally about it. Um, well, it's lovely to talk to you too. And I wish you all the best with your studies in your exam and, and also your, your personal journey. Miigwech.